Sorry, I was choosing a word we had in our last two Zooms. We had this beautiful uh, meditation about dhyana and prema tattva, how to go deep in my meditation, how to become more intense and condensed in feelings of meditation. And also, Srila Naratam Dastako is speaking about this, and I choose the verse 79. Before, I think it, this uh, uh, oh. I, my and all the Darcy's, especially. Uh, so, so here our Kama Chakra, our dear Ananda Das Babaji, under the guidance of our dear Gurudev. So the subject today is anxious meditation, anxious meditation. Meditation wow. with the feeling of desire, of intense, you know, greed. Radha Krishna Koro Dhyan, Svapne O, Na Bolo An. Prema, Vina, Ana, Nahi, Chao. Meditate on Radha Mohan and don't speak of anything else but them, even in your dreams. Yuga Lakishora Prema, Yeno Laksha, Bana Hema, Arati Piriti Rasidyao. Don't desire anything but Prema. The Prema of the Yuga Lakishore is like gold. Molten a hundred thousand times. Meditate on their deep attachment and love. So here, this uh, I because this commentary actually is three and a half pages. It's about the different kinds of dhyan, and it's very very interesting to you know meditate what kind of you know, depth we can reach, I can reach in my meditation on Srimati Radhika and her beloved. And we have heard also in our last classes under the beautiful blessing of our Gurudev and all Vaishnavas, how is the beauty of deep meditation, how we can go more deeper and more condensed in meditation in uh, contemplation and here in this commentary i just uh, collected somehow the points that were most attractive to myself because i apologize i i i speak mostly for myself for the purification of my senses so that i may develop some spiritual senses and spiritual understanding by the mercy of all of you so in this commentary, he is saying that Prema Bhakti is the internal practice in Raga Nuga, you know, in following the footsteps of the gopis of our Srimati Radhika. And deep and specific concentration of the mind is called meditation or dhyan. We have heard also in the last classes that Smaran. It's like a beginning meditation. In Smaran, it can be like a sanchari, the floating of the mind. Oh, yes. Oh, this class was so nice. I heard about this and that. And then I chant Hare Krishna. And then again, the mind maybe goes somewhere else. So Smaran is like a sanchari. It could be, you know, a wave of a different remembrance. And Dhyan is the very life of spiritual practice, he says, and it's deep and specific. So when I try to understand the difference, I understand that Dhyan meditation, when we meditate on the different aspects of our Radharani and Mohan in the service, this is like a sty bath in meditation. And when we do this, the result of this deep contemplation and deep meditation, a very astonishing metamorphosis can happen. What is this metamorphosis? 
we all know from biology and from the nature these little caterpillars you know in the summertime they are growing and they are eating the leaves and then after some time when they go through their transformation there will be a beautiful butterfly so our practice in raganuga bhakti and rupanuga bhakti it is also like this first we are meditating maybe on a very shallow basis and we are doing our practices on a you know repetitive you know repetition and maybe like a habit but then later if we want to continue to feel more and more relish and also increase the taste it is important that we go deep in contemplation and concentration and then the astonishing metamorphosis can take place even here he says of the external gross body and then if we look in the dictionary of metamorphosis transformation or transmutation is that it it is uh, explained it is a complete change of form structure or substance of character and appearance so we know the example of the butterfly or the the caterpillar and also another example is uh, the tadpole and the frog you know these small little black ones they are very cute in the summertime you see them in the water and then they develop into a frog it's like they don't know what they will become they just follow it, their instincts and so also when we enter bhakti in the beginning we don't know what we will become we don't know what is my relationship to krishna we try to you know surf in a way that is quite external for many years i did that i tried to surf i tried to distribute chila prabhupad's books i tried to be a good devotee like i follow principles of purity of satvagun i chant the holy name with a prayer for purification and of course also with a prayer to surf uh, shri chaitanya's mission which i thought at that point would be distributing the holy name and the books of shrila prabhupad so that was a level but now after 40 years almost i would like to become more deep and more realized in my ishta devi shrimati radhika in the, my position as her dasi so i try to understand what is this metamorphosis what is the transformation what does it take and uh, here he also says this astonishing transformation can take place as a result of deep contemplation means that my material existence is somehow uh disappearing is not so present anymore sometimes i feel when i chant my gayatri is oh now i am going deep and then i forget time and i do my mantras and and then i wake up out of my mantras or not wake up but i come back to external consciousness and it has happened that i one and a half hour have passed so i think this is like a beginning stage of of this deep contemplation where i'm not into any uh, you know leela yet but i try to absorb into the meaning and into the context of uh, the ishta devi and all the you know my uh, my guru manjari and my uh, ananga manjari and my rupa manjari i try to pray to them and i try to deeply deeply feel what how can i connect to you and what service i can do so i think that is the part of metamorphosis it will take place and then at that point i can feel like oh wow i am very uh, peaceful i am very uh, you know shanti and i feel connected i feel uh, in love i feel balanced but that's what uh, narottam das thakur is explaining to us 
And he, the dasis of Shrimati Radhika in the form of Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur and our dear Nantasas Babaji Maharaj, that is in a different level even that. You know, he says there are four kinds of meditation that will result into that metamorphosis. It's one about the form. It's called Rupa Dhyan. When we meditate on how, you know, from top, from, from bottom to top about the lotus feet, and then we go, you know, to the, to the navel or to the dress, and we go to the, the face, and we go to the earrings, and we can meditate on the form. And then from that will come also some more realizations and some more closeness. And then it can be about the attributes. Guna Lila, what are the qualities? Shimati Radhika is sweet. She is of fresh youthfulness. She has restless eyes. She has a sweet smile. She is expert in singing and she speaks charmingly. And I re when I was reading this, I thought, yeah, this is the blessing that Gurudev is now giving us that we can become attached to hearing and listening this and repeating and reading. And I was thinking, this is so much uh, Radha Ras Sudhanidhi. This is this Radha Nishta, this firm faith. Yes, I am her Dasi, and she is the most beautiful personality that is existing. And that is so much interested in, you know, inviting me to come closer to her. So I think these qualities of Shrimati Radhika, her compassion and her motherly love for her maidservants, this is such a, you know, mercy to what I feel to get from uh, meditating and reading Radha Ras Sudhaniti. For example, I just try to give some examples according to our point where we are right now and how we are guided by Gurudev. And then there's this third uh, kind of dhyan, it's called Leela dhyan. It's about all their pastimes, all their plays, how they are meeting each other and what time they are waking up, how they are waking up when they are meeting secretly in their kunjas. And we have all these beautiful descriptions of uh, Nishanta Leela and we have all these songs how beautiful they are being woken up by the birds and by the different, different creatures of Rindavan that are helping them to go back and wake up and go back to their duties, to their external, you know, circumstances. And they have to separate again. And how is this feeling of separation of Radha and Mohan? And how the... Dasis can assist that when they wake up. What are their services? They are bringing uh, fresh towels. They are bringing uh, wonderful glasses full of herbal juices in golden pitches and golden glasses. And they are combing Shrimati Radhika's hair. They are helping them to dress and to, you know, come back to their own selves because sometimes when Radha Mohan are spending the night together and they wake up, they don't even are back in their normal uh, selves because sometimes Shimati Radhika thinks that she is Krishna. She's still so much in this uh, oneness. And sometimes Krishna thinks she is, he is Shimati Radhika. And he says, you have to make a break. Why do you ma make a braid and dress me in the sari? And Shimati Radhika wants to put on the pitamba. You know, the mandaris have to deal with these kind of situations. They know, must know what to do then and how to kindly and softly guide them back so they become, you know, themselves and that it won't be a big scandal in Vrindavan. <laughs> so Baba is so so humble that he doesn't even in his uh, purport about the Leela Dhyan, he is uh, 
mentioning Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami and uh, Govinda Lilamrita and, you know. But actually, we have found out that the most treasurable Lila meditation we have is in Lila Bakush Manjali, because these are not just the general Lilas, these are especially the Lilas who, after meditating them, will guide us into Seva Dhyan, which is the fourth Dhyan. The Seva that I have in my, you know, in, when I get the mercy, I can do Seva. And not only serving like in my uh, external appearance as a sadhaka, I would like to serve, you know, I like to do uh, practical things. I want to be useful. But when will I be really useful? When I can serve Shirada Mohan in their leelas, when I can serve my Swamini in her desires to serve Mohan, then that will be the success and that will be the happiness of my Guru Manjari. When my meditation becomes so uh, condensed and so deep, by their mercy, of course, but with my desire. So, when we read this paragraph on the second uh, page, it's so amazing how uh, Ananda Das Babaji is humble because under Leela Dhyan, he doesn't even mention his books and his commentaries. But we know that meditating Vilapa Kushmanjali and Radhara Sudhanidhi and his commentaries, all of his mercy is in there. And I want to prove this by reading a little bit of a beautiful conversation between Radha and Mohan that is in the commentary of one of his verses in Radhara Sudhanidhi. And then that commentary, he also mentions that verse that actually applies to the internal practice of Raganuga Bhakti or Rupanuga Bhakti. Sadhana bhavi boyaha siddha dehe bhavotaha raga paterai se upai. Whatever I think of during my spiritual practice, I will attain when I reach perfection. This is the means of Raga Bhakti. The treasure I desire as a practitioner, I will get when I attain my spiritual body. It is just a question of being ripe or unripe. So again, we hear that is we want to become ripe. We want to, I desire to, you know, go into Dhyan and not be stuck in Smaran or, you know, be stuck in the feeling that I do my duties, I chant my mantras, but I want to go deeper. Please help me, Gurudev. Please help me, all my, you know, dasis who I want to really follow in their own way to become more perfected and because what is the secret to become ripe? We all know it. We have to be together with those who are more ripe. If I have an avocado, that is very hard in the beginning. It will take a long time to be ripened. <laughs> but if I have a, a tray of apples who are ripe and I put the avocado on top of these apples, then the avocado will be soft and and you know, ripening very fast. Mm. Wow. Beautiful. So I want to read a very beautiful conversation between Shimati Radhika and Shri Mohan, Shri Krishna. Because I, I was thinking, yeah, Baba is so merciful that how did he listen this? in his meditation, because he is a ripe person. So if I listen these meditations and these conversations from his, you know, feather, from his writings and meditation, maybe I get the mercy also that my meditation can become stai, can become dhyan, can become deeper. Sri Krishna says, 
Oh no, first I will read. Shripad, in his kinkery form, says that Sashimuki, moon faced Srimati Radhika, speaks with the king of lovers with a faltering voice of ecstasy. How sweet is that talk? Oceans of nectarian rasa emanate from each and every syllable. So if you ever like poetry or love letters or love songs like me, I guess every girl likes love, so love, love songs and loves letters. <laughs> then why not meditate about the love songs and the love poetry between Radha and Moha? So Krishna says, Oh, dearest one, even the greatest misers are sometimes generous when they see a suffering beggar. That can be seen in the world. Normally, you are very sad when you see someone else suffering. But still, you will not give me the nectar of your lips now. Even if I pray to you for it. This is very amazing. So Krishna, in his beautiful mood of submissive surrender to Srimati Radhika, is begging for some loving exchange. Srimati replies, Oh, most shameless boy, Unfortunately, my girlfriends acted as my enemies today by bringing me in your hands. That is not your fault at all. A hunter wanders from forest to forest to catch the deer. And when he accidentally catches a golden deer, then that is a very glorious moment for him. <laughs> Similarly, you have now become so shameless to beg the housewives of Braj for the nectar of their lips. So, these are the love exchanges of Srimadharatika with her beloved, and it's called some love. And some lab is uh, a beautiful exchange of words. And if we go through the books and if we look for this nectar, we will find a lot of it. And I think it's so beautiful because it's an art to, to speak, you know, Rasika words. And Shimati Radhika, she is the most Rasik. And even Mohan is begging for one drop of this rasa from her lotus lips. Because only then he can develop his rasa more and become more deep also himself. So he becomes a beggar. He is, uh, you know, he, from everyone else is begging everything, becomes a beggar of love. And that is the most beautiful, beautiful thing to hear for the kinkaris and to meditate on for those who really want to experience the supreme level of divine love. And that is what Gurudev wants to give to us. And that's why we are now meditating on this Prema Tattva, how to go into Prem. When we were listening to the two classes or meditating, you know, with our dear Goranga Sundara, and then on Sunday all together, all of us, then I thought, wow, yeah, now Gurudev is giving us Prem Prayojan. He has given us already our Sambanda. He has given us our Swarup. He has shown us again and again every day how to become Abhideya. To change, you know, from the spiritual, from the material body consciousness into spiritual, he has given us. And now he's giving us Prem Prayojan. And I feel so um, embarrassed because I'm not really a very sincere student of this, but I'm begging 
that I become one. <laughs> I'm begging that this metamorphosis will happen and that, you know, my spiritual senses will develop by listening this more and uh, developing more taste. And I, I beg you, my dear Vaishnavas, my Dasis, that bless me with this also, that we all together can become in a deep, you know, levels of our meditations, not only enjoy the beautiful life of a devotee, which is also uh, quite nice already. <laughs> so I just wanted to give this little exchange because I, I thought it is proving that how beautiful it is when meditating on these words. And even if I cannot hear them in my own spiritual senses yet, but when I repeat them, and I chant and I hear them and I listen and I think and I pray for the mercy to hear them. At least in my consciousness, something is already like a layer of having been able to come in touch with that beautiful love letters and love talks of Sri Radha Mohan. And then about the Sevadhyan. What is my service then? I hear them talk, I hear them, you know, waking up, I see that and I meditate on that, but what is my service? Gurudev has given that to me. He has given one outline, but of course the services of the mandaris are unlimited. And again, in this purport, it is uh, mentioned that this Sevadhyana has also different levels. And we have heard about these technical terms. It is the mental service to Radha Mohan and their girlfriends in the yoga peat means they are all together doing different services when they are meeting, like preparing the fruits, cutting the fruits, preparing the dresses and the different uh, smells and the different cups and the different uh, flower garlands and many, many different things on different levels of their meetings. As we have heard from Gurudev, there's the meeting in the Kunj, there's the meeting in the Nikunja and then in the Vritti Nikunja. And here Baba is explaining there's the Swarasika meditation and the Mantramai meditation. One is more like a stream, it goes from one Leela to the next or one Seva. But the other one is like a lake, Mantra Mai. It's called uh, the one that is fixed on one uh, certain situation. And he is explaining that the Astakalya Lila, for example, is Svarasik, means that do, during the day they are going to different, different places. And, you know, they are meeting or they, let's say, let's start with like a material concept of time. They are um, uh, waking up and after meeting at night and they go uh, to the different def des uh, destinations. Krishna goes back to Nandaga and Shimati Radhika returns to Yavat. And then they are uh, quickly going in their beds and they are still tired. Uh, eyes are rolling. They are having, you know, red eyes and again they fall asleep. But then they are woken up. Krishna is woken up by Mother Yashoda. And we have heard so many beautiful Leelas about that, how she is seeing all these different marks on his body. And he says, my boy, you have been playing in the forest again with the suckers and they are doing something to you when, when they are jumping on you and you are throwing sticks and you have to be more careful. And Shimati Radhika goes home to Yavad and uh, grandmother is coming and saying, ooh, what is this? I saw this yellow pita bar on Krishna yesterday and she has it on herself. And then the Mandris and Sakis, they are working together quickly. And Vishaka says, oh, look at this. You just were blinded by the, by the uh, sun. Look this through this window and quickly one Mandri is changing the yellow pita bar to a blue scarf, to blue shawl. Like this, we know all this. And if we go like this during the day, 
And we remember this. This is called Astakalya Lila, and that is called Swarasik. It goes from one, you know, time to another time. And we have heard also from different devotees who were setting their alarm clocks, uh, trying to memorize, you know, the different, different times. Oh, now they had Radha Kund. Let me meditate on that Lila's. Let me meditate on the verses that are taking place in Radha Kund, maybe from Vilapa Kushmanjali. And in the afternoon, meeting at uh, Suryakund, and so on and so on. But then there's also these different other meditations that are more stable in one place, and they are called mantra mai uh, meditations, like the yoga peed meditation. Yoga peed is what we also get from Gurudev when we get our Swarup meditations. That means when they are all together, and we see Radha Mohan are in the middle, they are in the you know, yoga stali, they are in their place of of uh, enjoyment, and all the sakis are there, and all the mandris are there, and they are playing or dancing or singing, whatever they do. So these are the different, different four kinds of dhyans, and I just want to mention them, you know, in a like condensed form, because if you go through the the commentary, you will find a lot of beautiful more information and hints. And uh, Baba says, meditate on the rasa of their deep attachment and love. So I just want to say that, that our be beloved Gurudev never says we should do that or that or that. He says it will become natural by our own taste and our own um, nourishment of what we feel is nourishing. It's not that we have to do it like this or like that. <clears throat> Usually he says what we hear during the day when we go to class in the morning or when we hear any kind of kata, that is going in my consciousness, in my mind, and that I try to follow. And then according to my own capacity, in my own meditation, in the morning, in the evening or during the day, according to my circumstances. And of course, during the all activities, what I do during the day, that will be the best. If I always remember, I'm a Darcy. And how can I connect the situation <clears throat> that I have in my Sadaka Deha with the mood and the feeling of a Darcy? That is what Gurudev always says, be in that mood all 24 uh, seven, 24 hours, seven days a week, or try to develop it, try to desire it. If I don't have developed it, or if I don't feel connected to it, I try to desire it. Because the desire always comes before the realization. <clears throat> and if there is no desire, the metamorphosis will not take place so smoothly. So the de desire must be there. And of course, we need the blessings. And of course, in the end of the purport, also Baba is saying, the devotee's eagerness will unlock sufficient grace of the Lord, of the Swamini and the Her Mohan. Strong eagerness is called Prem. And the culmination of eagerness is found in the practice of Brajaras, in Madhuryaras. To increase this ocean of eagerness, Sri Radha Mohan have accepted an extramarital relationship. Therefore, meditation filled with deep hankering is the proper practice to attain love for the lotus feet of Sri Radha Mohan who are themselves the embodiments of spiritual love flavors. So it's like we have heard so many times, but which I try to always remember myself when I come into like a habit of the devotion, you know, that feeling habits of devotion that is coming back to my Vaidhi practice and my Vaidhi mentality, although I try to enter and practice Raganuga Bhajan. 
So we know that we need the mercy, but according to our eagerness, the mercy will unlock. And eagerness does not mean that I am qualified. Eagerness only means that I have a strong desire to receive mercy and to go, you know, into my spiritual senses. And then one day at the mercy of all the Vaishnavas, of all the sadhus, of my Guru Mandari, I can enter really into my spiritual senses and I can go into Dhyan and I can uh, be with them, be with her. And of course, every Guru, as we have heard also, is giving different, different uh, um, advices and you know, according to their own realization. And we have the good fortune to be with our dear Gurudev Sadhu Maharaj, who is so generous also to guiding us with a lot of patience, which I can see in my case, <laughs> and with a lot of, you know, mercy. And always so understanding with our external circumstances in our sadhaka dehas and our, you know, individual situations of our lives. But then in Braj, you know, it's all about going from the material senses into the spiritual senses. And then we need this mercy to go to Gurudev and say, Gurudev, you know, I had this and that. Is this spiritual already or am I still in my sanctuary bath? And he's always helping in every every level of our existence to become more fixed and more um, closer to our you know spiritual existence, which is there at the same time. It just has to be revived. Like uh, Naratom Dostako says, uh, it's only a matter of being ripe or unripe. So that was my little meditation on this verse, which is so amazing and has the different, different uh, details about that yarn that go goes into the stai uh, fixed um, meditation on the different qualities of the different services and also of my form, because Gurudev said, when we chant our Gayatris also, I have to remember what is my form. And then I I thought this morning when I was chanting, um, yeah, the meditation on the uh, Chaitanya Leela, this is in my Sadaka Deha, this is when I'm serving and I'm praying to them to help me to become a Darcy. And then when I go to the Guru Manjari, a meditation that does actually need to be in my spiritual body. That's my desire. It's not there yet. I'm practicing, I'm praying, I'm begging for this, and I'm crying. But I'm hoping. So I think that. Uh, Now I have maybe spoken enough and um, forgive me if I did any mistake and please inspire me also by your uh, feelings on this verse and maybe you would like to share something. So, Sunni Didi so very beautifully described this uh, very intense, this bus. <coughs> I also, I am not so qualified to discuss this thing, but uh, I want to a little bit to uh, add something. And uh, this, this describes a different kind of meditation. This describes 
four kind of meditation. And uh, by the Bhakti's meditation and Raganuga Bhakti's meditation, what's the difference? By the meditation and Raganuga Bhakti's med uh, meditation. This Naren Maharaj told us in Hidden Path of Devotion. Someone who has Swarupa, someone who has Swarupa of Gurudev, or nothing. By the Bhakti's case, no Swarupa. Myself and also Guru, Guru Dev or Guru Manjari. So, this meditation, this very interesting, this we need Swarupa. And uh, this we need Stai Baba. Why we need Stai Baba? Because during meditation, if we are not to stay, then we make we don't know what kind of object, objects we can get as a result. Guru Dev used to say now, nah, whatever you meditate, you will get it. Even material thing also. So, and this also Baba mentioned in later part of this. Uh, we should not say the uh, is 509 page middle. The practitioner who covet prema must give up all other desire but for prema. So and then devotional means service. Therefore, the practicing devotee must desire nothing else but the service of his beloved deity. Without the prema, no kind of devotional service can make the beloved deity happy. Hence, the yearning for prema awakens within the heart of the pure devotee. He who desire prema is absorbed in practicing bhajan, which is the mean and the cause of prema, while rejects all factors that stop him from attaining prema. This, uh, for this prema is one particular baba, particular rasa. Say, somehow, if we want to become manjari, we have to fix manjari baba. If we want to become Saki, we want to fix Saki's Baba. If we want to we want to have Mazari love and we have to think we have to fix Mazari love. Otherwise, you know, we cannot get desired result. So therefore, Guru Dev is saying yeah. it's the same thing. If we are not to stay Baba, we cannot to, we, we we have nowhere. We don't know where we are going after this. So therefore, Stai Baba is so important. Fixing one Baba and fixing one Baba meditation is very, very important. And also this Baba, very interesting, finally mentioned Seva Dhyana. So this Seva Dhyana, according to our Rasa, this Seva is different. Like Mazat Seba and uh, Saki Seba, Manjari Seba, Wasaki Seba is completely different. So this also should be fixed one pointed. Otherwise, we cannot get it. So this, this is uh, actually for me, I don't understand before. Because just I was thinking before, I just do Dira Smarana, that's okay. 
And also Suniti did the same. Sometimes, or actually many times, especially me, I have tendency to do some, some kind of body. Means, you know, this time, okay, this time this is meditation, okay, this, oh, this meditation all oh, that this one, from this one, after this one, after this one, this one, like this. But actually, Raganuga is very, very spontaneous. Because Guru Dev also used to say, this is natural. Natural appearing. And one day I asked to Guru Dev, so I don't have a realization yet. So could you give me advice to give realization? And then he said, concentrate on chanting. If deep concentrate chanting, and then realization will appear. Because our tendency is now I also be careful because sometimes we are during chanting, we are not too careful. Then if we are not too careful, easy to remember another thing. Oh, today I have to do this work. Oh, I have to do this. Oh, my family member, what's happening? Or oh, this devotee, what's happening? Kind of thinking. No, actually, no. During chanting, we should always on, only concentrate this Radha and Moha. Nothing else. But we have tendency, we have, you know, to write, oh, okay, today's prasad, what, you know, what should I eat? Or today, what kind of service should I do? Service it is is better, but uh, you know sometimes we we have tendency to deviate. So Guru David's suggestion, which I'm understanding, is concentrate on you know and sound at first, and then then from sound from 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 form from you know kind of so. What I want to share is concentration. Guru Dev said, concentration become more deep and thick. That Guru Dev say, uh, told to me. So it may help uh, as a devotee. So that's it. Thank Any comment from you, Guru Dev? Develop. Development, I have to watch myself. And this practice, when I watch myself, then this practice comes that I watch always this, that my mind is with name or not, or I'm thinking something else. And we have to bring mind to the name. This is very good meditation. I say it's practical. And when mind comes to the name, what I am chanting, then the spurti start coming. The spurti means asu, air standing, feelings realizations coming. When this realization coming, then you say today, then Sarup I always meditate in one Sarup and fall in love in material Sarup. Male fall in female Sarup and female fall in Mesaru is my bodily consciousness, is material. 
But when you want to go with spiritual, you have to do spiritual is to Dev Sarup. Sarup is also here. And when we fix the Sarup, then Spurti comes up with Leela Gang. Leela will start flowing there. Then we start living there. And when I start living in the Sadhu, we are feasted them and Leela, then third thing, Rasadhyam, then do system. Then my Siddha Saru, we start doing Shiva. That is our Pariyojan, our Thai. And that our Thai Bhav is Saru Siddha. What Prabhupada say, page 4. <coughs> So, Seva, Dhan is the highest position of our development. When we are living in the Seva meditation, Prem Prema, then Sarup is also there, Leela is also there, Rasa is also there, and Pariyajan is Seva, means my loving service. For my family. Very simple and very easy process. Little in beginning <coughs> to come to Sadat Deha, to Siddha Deha, takes time. Mm. And to realize meditation is spiritual, takes time. When we realize that we have to move in a spiritual life, they are not taking time. Mm. Taking time to move from the material to spiritual. Why? The old friend is telling us, why you are leaving me? I will give you everything. I will give you sleep also. You will do Leela also. You will get us also, and you will do seva. <laughs> All you will do is here also you can do seva. Which seva you are searching for? And they invite me back to material sarudha, material leela. I have to do leela. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I start? Then, then Rasa, <laughs> we get the juicy life. We feel that juice, but one day we renounce it. No way to live in this way. And Seva will also come in this material consciousness. Whole life you serve. But one day say, you do nothing for me. Sure. So this material world, and this is a spiritual world. Sarukdhan, Dhan. Do the Sarukdhan of them to, 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 your yesterday to fix yourself in this spiritually that to come out from there to spiritual consciousness only sarup will bring you so sarup dhyan is very important and sarup dhyan bring you to Dila Dhan. Dila Dhan will give you rasa. 
juicy. You will become juicy. And this juicy nature will start serving. Hmm. Real service. Divine service. But we live in the false illusion and we think this practice we are doing here in material world. Hmm. Right or not? Okay. Sahaja. <laughs> of what you say that is happening to me and I want to come out from that. No. Me too. Everyone has to come out. So Baba is so merciful. He gives the steps to how to, to bring yourself in there. And when you will try to do it for this, then you will automatically come out from this. If I think that I come out from this and I have no greed to come in, where I will go? Yeah. So you have to know to go to in, then automatically you are out. <laughs> 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 Easy, no? Where is it? So, he so, 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 so much for we give Radha Dasyam name also and she is teaching how to go there. This name of Radha Dasyam is given by Suniti. Mm. Right? Yes. And she is helping us how to be in Sarupyan Leela Dhyan, Rasa Dhyan, and Seva. She also started the Zoom. And she, oh, God. And she, it's all Gurudev's and Gopinath's mercy, I tell you. I don't know why he gives any. I don't know why she started this. <laughs> I'm not sure. so smart. <laughs> You are the smartest Gurudev, you're always in Parakia. <laughs> I am looking the mercy how it's happening. Till today, yesterday, Gopinath came and he said that Gurudev, I want more Kirtan. I said, also I am thinking this and I want to share with you. He said, I want Ekadasi Kirtan to do. Organize this Ekadasi Kirtan two days a month. I said, wow, if you add uh, Rup, uh, our Thakur uh, Mahasev song, uh, it will be more good. Some song and Mahamantra. So maybe from next Ekadasi, it will be happy. Yeah. Uh, and 26 is Basant Pajmi, Gurudev appearance day. Mm. It will, uh, a special program is happening. Mm. We are trying to meditate in Gurudev appearance day program. Mm. How to make it beautiful. <coughs> and it's a Basant Pajmi day. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what how this happening. But coming festival is this. <laughs> Maharani said, I'm reaching on 25th. <laughs> I said, wow. 26 is Basant Pajmi and Guru Dev appears there. Mm. So nice, Radhe. <laughs> Thank you, Suniti. Thank you, Guru Dev. Sharing so nice. You are telling how to understand Radha Rasudhanithi. 
and will Aku Sumadhi. You are showing the way. Yeah. So all your prashad, Gurudev, thank you that I can be your servant, your dasi. No, no. We are all brothers and sisters. We are only one day different. There is no, yeah, what do you say in English? Senior, H junior? No, adoring. Um, we, uh, are, we are all friends. Worship. No, no, yeah, hierarchy. 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 Yeah, we are all brothers and sisters. Hierarchy is okay. And we are gold. We, we share for only to be in one way. We are not senior, junior. We are all, <coughs> even um, our Swami, she is Swami, but she gives motherly love, friendly love. <laughs> all variety she is teaching us. She, when she needs, she gives mother Lila. When she also behaves, the manjari is like a friend and she likes that. Because the feelings are one. So, we are all trying to to serve together to our to them. Right? So you are more senior to everyone. You are, you are guiding us and we try to grow ourselves. Radhe. Thank you, Gurudev. Radhe, Radhe. Uh, give my love to Gaurav Sundara. He sent me very good master. Yes. He is realizing by your mercy now Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita's purports really deeply. Wow. But I don't want to disturb him because he has to finish his job quick. So I know yes, it's happening today, Gurudev. Today, some new renters are coming and it's going in a good direction. This job has to do. He has started his cooking server. So I leave him cooking, nice cooking server. <laughs> cooking is the best thing. Your job is all cooking. How beautifully you know to give it spices and how tasteful you cook. That is your job. <laughs> it should be, it has to be tasteful for offering. This cooking server, right? <laughs> Most intelligent person can do nice cooking, Sarah. And that is how to manage in the material world and be in the spiritual world because you are in the kitchen of Radharani. So you cook for the service for Radha. So you have to do job you not do job means you are not cooking nicely. Mm -hmm. You are not good cook. Preparation. You are not good preparation, not 
it nice cleaning your plate to serve to the to, to, to your yesterday Radharani and you are not good to serve to his devotee. Hmm. It's cooking chef. <laughs> yes. Not your job. <laughs> your job, then you are out. When it is her job, why you are out? <laughs> Everything is servo. With the mental there is nothing physical. In mental it is your mind is saying mental. In the mental relation, it's where is your mind? You are living there. What to do? Only change the way of mind. Where, where you want to be a devotee, you keep mind there. You want to serve Maya, you keep your mind in Maya. <laughs> If you want to serve the devotee, he surely got the money today from the company and she, she, in her money, she expend money to buy the things for the distributed devotee, you see? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you're so Yes or no? Yes, yes. No, so, Kishori and Kishori. Ah, Dharma, Asi and Kishori. Asi. Kishori Asi. Leela, Asi the Kishori, Leela. Who was that? Kishori, Priya, Priya, Priya. Kishori Leela and Kishori Priya. Kishori Priya, Kishori Leela. And Kishori San. Kishori San. Kishori Leela is always is a Leela we are surviving. <laughs> one is a Kishori Leela, one is a Rasa Leela. <laughs> yes. All, all Bukhara is moving into Leela. We are meditating. Which side you are living, Guru? You are living Rasa Leela side? Both are. My Kishori, where is he on the Shammai? Only he served to Radha Mohan. Yeah. Now, my Kirtan is ready for sorry for 15 minutes. Thank you, Sunday. You give me time to share. <laughs> Thank you. You give time to us, Gurudev. <laughs> You ask, I have to follow that. I say you are all senior than me. <laughs> In the Zoom classes also I am lowest. Everywhere I am no, you because I am the only meditating in the same challenge. This is my seva. Mm. I have to be good. They give me challenge seva. Always meditate in the lotus feet of Vaishnava. Then you can see my feet. <laughs> Thank you all, Radhe Radhe.